of you may ask how this style works. Um, they can sometimes work independently, but it is best to put them together. Initially, I talked about the graded laminated paper they give you when you sit at the exam hall. So the best thing or what I did was that as soon as I sat down and they gave me that paper, I wrote these five styles at the top of the paper. I did this because when you are very tense and under pressure, sometimes you might not necessarily recall all these things. But when you have it written down at your own pace and you are stuck, you can quickly just go there, reference it and then answer your question. <laughs> understand why I'm smiling or I look cheerful the reason is that this technique I'm going to show you is going to help a lot of people to pass this exam because a lot of um, the questions that come around are either priority questions or select or that apply so if you have a technique in solving them it's going to be very easy for you to pass this end clicks so this is what I, de I developed when you sit at the exam center or the exam hall you are given a grid white sheet and a backup pen and this is like a rough sheet but you can't not rub it so you basically jot all that you you want to write and all that you want to put on if you want to make a calculation or anything you put it down let's go straight into the techniques i have five ways of solving it and i wouldn't say ways i would say is a combined style because you need all of them to make it work right so the first one that I will tell you is to use ask graph ask graph is a mnemonic which was deduced by NCLEX a high yield guys if you don't follow NCLEX high yield you are doing yourself a lot of harm or a great harm he is one of the best um, educators when it comes to NCLEX. He has, he's got a lot of mnemonics. He's got, he basically has a, a simplified way of making you understand things. So when I chanced on him, he really helped me. So if you if you don't know him, please go um, go and check NCLEX I Yield. You've got a lot of um, audios and a lot of materials with NCLEX so check out on them A stands for airway S for sepsis K for potassium G for glucose and I think R is for lethargy A is for altered level of consciousness and P is for peritonitis or hemorrhage so when you sit and you have a priority question all you are going to look at is is it airway is it sepsis the potassium glucose lethargy altered level of consciousness peritonitis or hemorrhage so sometimes there might be an airway but the option is framed you know in such a way that it is actually correct and safe or there could be a potassium a potassium or glucose in the options and that particular potassium or glucose range is in a normal within a normal range so you have to also know all the normal ranges so if it they are all in the normal ranges it's not the answer so it's not necessarily that you're going to have only one option from the as graph no you can have like multiple um, options coming out from the as graph but it's how they are phrased that is how you're going to select your answer so in this case let's assume you had an airway airway option you had a glucose option you had a potassium option and you had altered level of consciousness and glucose and potassium are all within normal ranges the airway is fine if you just go straight to the altered level of consciousness and let's say the gcs is like eight ish you go straight for that one so that is one secret that i am um, or how i use the ask graph i might possibly not explain it better so you can just go to the nclix i use page for a better understanding or the second style is Maslow's hierarchy so you had a question you checked ask graph it didn't fit in the ask graph what are your options how best can you answer this question you go straight to Maslow's hierarchy 
where does this option fall within the Maslow's hierarchy? Is it the basics, which is the most important? If it doesn't fall, then it go. It takes us to the third, which is the ABC method, which is the airway breathing and circulation, which is a bit similar to the um, ass graph because there's airway in the ass graph, but that is also a different way. By now, I should believe that every nurse knows how to use the ABC what you are looking out for in every stage so if it doesn't fall the option doesn't fall in the Maslow's hierarchy then you come to ABC you use ABC to try and answer that question if it's not helping you to answer that question then it takes us to our fourth which is assessment versus implementation. I've always put that as my, as my fourth point or style because it is very broad. Um, and then all the, sometimes you have a, like six options and you have only two options to group them. So most of the times that would be a fourth option. So by the time I get to the assessment versus implementation, I should have crossed some of the answers out or I should have been nearing my answer. So if you find an assessment or you are stuck between an assessment and implementation, please choose the assessment because you always assess first before you implement. So choose the assessment. The last and the final style is stable versus unstable. This is also one of the styles that I use and I've put that as the fifth because it is also very, very broad so it makes it very difficult to select because sometimes when you have let's say four options you can have two stable patients and two unstable patients and you are stuck between which of the options to choose so i have grouped these styles in such a way that the broader ones are at the bottom so by the time you get there you should have eliminated like two or three options and you are left with few to use these ones so with a stable versus unstable, always make sure that you are choosing the unstable patients. Because as a nurse, you your main, um, when you come to on a shift or some um, you are working, your main or important thing to do is to prioritize. And your unstable patients are those that you are going to look out for first because they are unwell and they can just deteriorate faster. So always make sure that your unstable patients are attended to first and your um, stable patient you can even um what is it called you can even delegate the stable patients for somebody else to look after them whilst you take care of the unstable one and always make sure that when questions like this this come up you take up the unstable patient when it comes up to a point where the unstable patient is being delegated to someone do not choose that option that is the wrong one so always take up the unstable patient because it is about you and you are the nurse to do it you may ask how this style works um they can sometimes work independently but it is best to put them together initially i talked about the graded laminated paper they give you when you sit at the exam hall so the best thing or what i did was that as soon as i sat down and they gave me that paper I wrote these five styles at the top of the paper. So I wrote the ask graph and I wrote what everything, um, all the letters stood for. And then I went to number two and then I wrote the Maslow's hierarchy. I drew it down and I went to number three and I put the um, ABC. I went to number four, I put as, um, assessment versus implementation and I went to number five and I put uh, stable versus unstable I did this because when you are very tense and under pressure sometimes you might not necessarily recall all these things but when you have it written down at uh, your own pace and you are stuck you can quickly just go there reference it and then answer your question so as soon as I have a priority question or a select order apply question I go straight where does it fall I check through as graph it doesn't fall I check through um, the muscle hierarchy it doesn't fall by the time I get to ABC at least I should have gotten an answer or some answers so guys use this technique it is the best if anybody uses it like I've given it to some people who have gone and it, it worked for them so I I know it, it actually works it not 
it did not just work for me it worked for other people so i i know it is a technique that actually works that's why i'm here to share with you all so please guys if anybody does it and it works please come back and let us know and then if you have any technique or any way of making the selector that I apply or priority question very easier to solve please put it in the comment section it might help somebody so as you always know this channel is all about helping us all succeed helping us all get through this and clicks our aisles on everything that we need to get through so guys please please as you are always doing for me please subscribe to this channel share to your friends and who might need it put it on those pages all those pages that you create you've created put it on they might help somebody thank you for watching my name is joycelle bye